Hey there, so today I'm doing another dollar store D&D build and this time I'm redoing something that I did a while ago. So I made a gelatinous cube and I made a mini out of a little Tupperware container from the dollar store and I covered it in a rubberized glue and made it a gelatinous cube. It was rubbery, it could cover up minis to swallow them, it was perfect. But I had a lot of people ask for like me to put uh, googly eyes or some just make it look sillier um, people were complaining that I made it green it should have been clear um, you know whatever um, but this time I'm gonna go completely silly with it and I'm gonna make a gelatinous cube out of Spongebob it's a little dollar store miniature and I'm gonna chop him up and turn him into a gelatinous cube so let's get started I guess So starting off, we are going to unwrap Spongebob and once we get him unwrapped, I'm going to use these little snips to get his arms and his legs and a few other things. Essentially, I'm going to use these snips to dismember Spongebob and after I do that, I'm going to continue to shave pieces of Spongebob off using a box cutter. So right now, I'm physically trying to rip off the bottom but it was much easier just to use the snips and the box cutter. So enjoy watching me mutilate SpongeBob with some household tools. So here I'm going to try to use a flat-headed screwdriver to pry SpongeBob's pants off, which is a really weird thing to say, but that was what I was trying to do. I eventually gave up and just used the box cutter and it worked great. So now I'm going to lay down some parchment paper and I'm going to make the base. I want the base to look like a puddle around the gelatinous cube. So I'm going to use some oven baked clay and make a puddle shape around the base of SpongeBob. So here I try it out a little bit, but I want it to look a little bit more like a puddle. So I'm going to take him off again and I'm going to continue to play with it and just give it a little bit more of a splatter kind of look so it has some like dribbly looking edges um, and just try and make it look a little bit more like a puddle of goo. Now I'm going to smooth it out by rolling it a little bit and then I'm going to squish Spongebob on top of it so I have a place to glue him and I'm going to put it in the oven and bake the base. Now that I got the base out of the oven, I'm going to glue Spongebob down into the little spot that I had shaped out for him to sit in. I find gel super glue a lot easier to use and it holds a lot better than regular super glue in my opinion. So that's what I'm going to use to glue Spongebob down into his little spot. So I hit it with a gray primer off screen and now I'm going to paint it up with a light teal base. The last time I made one of these, the clear one that I made, I made it a translucent green, which apparently they aren't green. I thought it was cool to be green, but uh, I was promptly told that that was wrong. So I'm going to keep it a little bit more to the book and do the light teal because that's what it looks like in the monster manual. Teal is one of my favorite colors, if not my favorite color. I would have used it to begin with, but I legitimately thought that they were green. So being a light teal going on top of a dark gray, the first coat didn't cover super well. So I wound up going over three extra times and each time I thinned it a bit more with water. And in the end, you don't really see any brush lines, 
which really makes thinning your paints worth it, so that way it just looks smoother. Of course, the thinner the paint, the more coats you have to put on to get good coverage, but it is well worth it. You don't have to use water, you can use more legitimate stuff, but water works good and, I, it, you know, it comes right out of the tap, so you can't really complain. Also, thinned paint dries a lot faster, so that is an upside to it. Next, I'll actually be making my own wash. I'm going to use this slightly darker teal and just use a lot of water to water it down past the point of thinning. And that's basically just a homemade wash. You can add a little bit of a flow aid like a soap or something like that, but I'm just going to do straight water and paint and this will do the job just fine. So this wash is going to add a little bit more depth to an otherwise kind of boring flat surface. It's going to bring out all the spots where it divots and curves and just give it a little bit more oomph. So to smooth out all the spots where the wash had pooled, I'm going to use Glacier Blue to dry brush and smooth everything out. And once I'm done blending and smoothing with the Glacier Blue, I am going to dry brush a little bit with white just around the edges to give it a little bit more of a bright finish. Now it's time for highlights. So I'm going to use the Glacier Blue to start and I'm going to go along all of the edges of his lips, of just the edges of the square spots and of the cheeks. And I'm going to use that lighter color to make it look like light is shining off of the gelatin. Now that I'm done highlighting with the Glacier Blue, I want to go a little lighter in certain spots and I'm going to use white to go even lighter and I'll do something called feathering, which is when you take your brush like you would normally, put a little bit on and then use your finger or a dry brush to kind of smooth it out and rub it off a little bit. And that's what I'm doing here just to make it look a little bit more shiny on certain spots. Then I'm gonna paint the eyeballs and I'm gonna do several coats of paint but I'm only gonna show you one because you don't want to watch me paint and dry and paint and dry. Now I'm gonna paint the irises. I'm gonna do a green. It's kind of an olive green. I didn't want to go too bright so I decided to go with a green. I thought it would look good with the teal. If you want to know the paint that I'm using, it's called Sherwood Green and it is from Scale Color. I love Scale Color. I think they cover super well and they're just an overall good paint. So now for a few final touches, I'm going to start by painting the inside of his mouth black. I did consider doing a dark teal, but I ultimately decided the black would look good with the cartoonish style.
Once I'm done with the mouth, I'm going to move on to the pupils and wrap it up. Big reveal, voila! I absolutely was not ready for how cute yet cursed this miniature was going to come out, but I absolutely love it, and it was relatively easy. This was a lot of fun to build, and easy to paint. So a lot of the time I try and put a little bit of thought, or at least planning into my miniatures, but I literally grabbed this guy and the same day I started on it because I thought it was a really fun idea. And I'm glad that I did it because he's now probably one of my favorite of my dollar store minis so far. Alright, so I finished up my Spongebob Gelatinous Cube. This guy came out awesome. Such a cute little goopy boy. I love gelatinous cubes and I love Spongebob so turning him into a gelatinous cube was kind of a no-brainer obviously this is more of a fun mini this isn't anything I'm going to use for like a serious campaign but if I ever do a cartoon based campaign he's going to be in it um, I love doing this a lot again pretty easy and cheap obviously it's a dollar store build um, but you can check out my other content. I have a lot more dollar store builds on TikTok. You can look at some of the pictures of my minis on Instagram. So you can just look through all of my different uh, accounts. They're all in my link tree. Uh, i got my email and stuff on there too. I got a PO box. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.